it was like an automatic personality you could put in a machine that was unpredictable, that was, would go awry. I completely wouldn't understand why it wasn't working or I, I would. Or They're rude, they're spitting, they're hot, they're, you know, they burn you, they, they're funny, they're, you know, they're quirky. So it was, and none of that I had to do. I'm Todd Cahill and we're at Steam Machine Sculpture. As a boy, I loved trains. When I started making steam engines, I think that was kind of that, that rediscovery of a, of a boyhood interest. I, I liked to be able to activate a piece, not have it activated, but to uh, have a process to getting it going, not just pushing a button or plugging it in. It would require me to be the operator, or, or a trained individual, you know. I met him at an exposition at Bob Miriam's Museum in East Greenwich. And uh, then I asked him a year later for an apprenticeship, and we got that sorted out. I'm a steam engineer at several other engine houses with big engines, and I said to him, uh, I'd like you to teach me practical machining uh, at time intervals that are not so long that I forget what I'm doing in between them. I figured Todd was the best way to do that. He figured the same, and that's what happened. Todd is really an amazing, unique person. Um, he's an individual who uses both sides of his brain, um, which for here at the museum, we always say that's innovation. It's funny because it's, uh, you make practical decisions in your life, and, and, and that's what it's, it's sort of, I've always been sort of, veering between the practical and the impractical and even like a, uh, a decision to make steam engines um, would seemingly be a very impractical choice of media but um, what it um, led me to to learn very practical things I started um, making art and uh, decided to be an art in high school, as a lot of people do. The engines that I build, because of their scale, you can never, you can capture the whimsy, you can capture, like I said, the personality of engines. There's no way on that scale that I can capture the, the glory. So that, I started drawing again. piece of artwork is not complete. It's not even, a, I don't think it's even a piece of art until you have a viewer. I went to engine shows and, um, you know, antique machinery shows and tractor shows and, and these things that were in the middle of nowhere and some of them are at museums or on farmers' fields or, and it, I met so many people and, and met my audience. One of my machinists said to me the other day, I don't like art. And I said, but you like Todd Cahill's work. I said, well, that's not art, that's engineering. I said, well, it's both. And I think that's really uh, important. So he, he's one of those individuals that crosses both sides. At these antique engine shows and machinery shows, uh, there's, it's, it's guy stuff. You know, it's rusty tractors, it's engines. And I think my work appeals to the guys, but Boy, it's the women that are being dragged to these things that it's like, ah, they go, it's a thing for me, you know? And uh, it's almost the opposite at the art fairs. And the guys are being dragged to it, and they see my work and they go, something for me. <laughs> you never know where you're gonna find your audience or what you're gonna, you know, please or whatever. You know. Here's this young lad who got involved with model engineering in his late 20s and has been playing with it ever since, and yet has the respect of machinists who worked for 60 years, or engineers who you know, were NASA scientists, and, and they respect his talent. And then artists, well-known artists that I've seen interact with him, truly respect his, his detail, his technique, his process. Um, 
and literally his finished product. When you follow your dream like this, instead of going to work in some, you know, cubicle, you have to really, really work because there's not much calling for this. And he, he goes out and does contracting work, model making work, really anything that pertains to his talents and um, can make him some good money to keep this stuff going. Um, I deal in reality. And, I, and, and that's always been a, a part of my work is dealing with the reality of whether it actually works or not, you know? I mean, in, in artistic endeavors and, and, you know, you go through art school and you have those questions, does this piece work? And I could never really, I, I, I like that question because it's so elusive though. It's like, what do you mean, does it work? And with a, an engine, it either works or it doesn't, you know? And it actually does work, you know? <laughs> He's also preserving a craft that I see here is uh, going by the wayside. We're losing our machinists. We're losing our engineers that understand the real process. Everything's being computerized, and so there's no appreciation for how real machines work. Todd has that. You know, along the lines of the model engineering and the, the engine shows and stuff like that, man, it's like... It's doomed to die. I mean, very soon it's, it's, it's a lot of older people. So if you can, it doesn't matter how you get younger people involved or interested in this. If, if there's a percentage of them that are, that are gonna work with steam engines or machinery or something, you know, it can keep that, that going. And you know, there's certainly nothing wrong with that.